Hello, welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. We are in a different location today, and I hope you enjoy. Um, sorry if this is out of focus or something is not right. I'm trying my best, okay? Today, I'm going to bring to you my list of 2021 book releases that I think are worth your time. A lot of these I think are either underhyped or underrated or they have been getting hype and they deserve it and they deserve your attention and you should read them if you haven't already if you're looking to you know knock out some more 2021 releases i know i'm filming this on august 31st so last day of august you know one of the best songs on folklore so obviously we're not through the year yet but that's why we got to talk about the releases that i have come out this year that i have read that i have enjoyed and i have my list right here um i don't own most of these books mostly because i read too many good books for me to own them all if that makes sense like i can't physically own all the books that i read Otherwise, I would just have a never-ending book collection when the reality is is that I already have an unending book collection of books that I need to read and books that I have read and loved. If you've been watching my channel for a while or you've been watching from this year and you've seen all of my wrap-ups, then these books will all be quite familiar to you because I've talked about them all, obviously, because I've read them and wrapped them up. So don't act surprised uh, and sorry if I'm being repetitive on my channel and repetitive about the books that I talk about but I can't help it, unfortunately. It's, it, it's, my, it's my gay brain ADHD disease, whatever. We're gonna go through this list based off of what I first read to when I most recently read. So not in the list of, not in the order of, you know, most recently released or earliest release to latest release, but chronologically from when I've read them. Mostly, I think. So the first book I want to talk about is The Prophets by Robert Jones Jr. And this book is a sort of, not a multi-generational family saga. Not exactly. Not exact. Well, it's magical realism. It's about a plantation in the Deep South in like the 1800s, you know, peak antebellum era. And we're following these people on this plantation, enslaved and not, and their relationships with each other and the dynamics that go on. But it's interspersed with these chapters and snippets of history and also a collective voice of the ancestors and the chapters of this book are named after the books of the bible it is almost biblical in the way that the story is told and it's fantastical and expansive and imaginative in the way that it's telling the stories of enslaved people and specifically enslaved queer people because there are queer narratives going on here and also the relationship that that has with christianity and religion and on this plantation uh, specifically and it very much reminds me of Toni Morrison. The writing is phenomenal and the story is wonderful, but it is a deeply traumatic story and look up trigger warnings for it. I look up trigger warnings for all of these books if you need them because obviously the topic and the theme of slavery and the struggle of enslaved people and the horrors of its reality is portrayed in, you know, a realistic way it, it is realism in its magical realism so i really recommend this book and i think that it's underhyped and doesn't get the love that it deserves it is very well written and a phenomenal and necessary and fascinating and gripping and emotional story about love and community and relationships and freedom and manipulation and power it's, it's wonderful, so highly recommend. The next book I want to talk about is Black Book by Matteo Escari Por. This book is a satire. You need to know that when you get into it. Um, I think that this got a lot of mixed reviews and is thus somewhat underrated. I did a video review of this that I'll link in the cards earlier this year. Gosh, that feels like such a long time ago. All these books I'm talking about feel like I read such a long time ago. Anyway, this book is about a black man climbing the corporate ladder at a New York City startup that is kind of whack. Um, and it is framed as a sort of like letter to young people of color wanting to get into business in the corporate world. It kind of reminds me of one of my favorite movies ever, Sorry to Bother You, but it's not fantastical or sci-fi and it's wildness it is purely like contemporary realism that sort of looks at that girl boss hustle grind culture and 
plays out the destructive nature and force of it in this really alarming way. We see our main character destroy himself and his relationships and all the things that are important to him in his life over a job, over the idea of success and being a successful businessman. And it's tragic, but it's also hilarious and horrifying in a very mm, American psycho type way. But it's not a thriller. It is just contemporary. So I think that it says a lot of very interesting things about race and class and gender and the politics of all of those things within the world of, you know, corporate business bullshit. And it's a really interesting criticism of it through the lens of someone who has succeeded and attempts to succeed within that you know environment so i really enjoyed this i thought it was pretty good and i would recommend it as a 2021 release the next book i want to talk about is across the green grass fields by shannon mcguire this is one of the more recent installments in the uh wayward children series every or the every heart a doorway series by Shauna McGuire, which is a portal fantasy featuring children who stumble across doors to magical universes that fully encompass who they are as people and they're, them coping with that reality, the one that they assimilate into and the one that they kind of get acclimated to versus their the true like real life reality and this book i think was very good and one of i think my favorite of the series so far the next book in this wayward children series is coming out soon i'm so excited to get my hands on it and i really enjoyed across the green grass field so if you like this series and also you can start at any point so if you haven't read any of the other books in this series you can just pick this one up and I think it'll be a fun magical time for you. It's very whimsical and charming, but it also grapples with a lot of really emotional topics and hard hitting themes in a way that I think is appropriate for young adult middle grade audiences, but also for adult audiences. So that's definitely a 2021 release that I have enjoyed and would recommend. The next 2021 release that I read is a nonfiction called Women and Other Monsters by Jess Zimmerman. This book is almost like a memoir style, but also with just like personal essay elements to it. Uh, and it's about feminism and Greek mythology, you know, our writer's personal life and her journey with feminism and identity and relationships and power dynamics. And I thought it was pretty solid, a pretty good contemporary nonfiction read. I would recommend it if that sounds interesting to you at all if you want to pick up a nonfiction that was released this year. The next book I want to talk about is one that's gotten a lot of hype for good reason and I'm here to tell you that it deserves the 2021 release hype and that is Milk Fed by Melissa Broder. This book is a phenomenal exploration of queer millennial Jewish woman identity and we're following this main character who is all of those things but also she's dealing with a lot of mommy issues and trauma and eating disorders and it's really messy and she gets involved with this girl who is from a conservative jewish family and is very fat and she works at the yogurt the froyo shop that our main character frequents and uh they strike up a friendship and something more and it's a lot about culture and family and weird, icky relationships with ourselves and with others. I thought it was phenomenal and brilliant and messy and gross, very gross. I think that the hype that it's getting is well-deserved. And I also mention it in my Girl Boss Gaslight Gatekeep video that uh, book recommendations of that genre. The next book that I wanna talk about is Detransition Baby by Tori Peters. This book has gotten a lot of hype and buzz and it deserves it because it is a phenomenal story that kind of jumps back and forth in time following these three women or, okay. So here's the drama of it. Basically, we are following someone who is a detransitioned trans woman, uh, and he goes by Ames now, and it's in the aftermath of his relationship with another trans woman, and now he is in a relationship with a cis woman, uh, who is his boss at his workplace, and it is kind of talking about motherhood because he accidentally gets her pregnant, even though he did not realize he would be able to do that because he was on a lot of hormonal suppressants, you know, d during his transition and during his experience as a trans woman. So it's a lot about that 
experience and identity, but it's also about the complex nature of the relationships between, you know, queer women and trans people. The relationship drama that goes on because Ames tries to loop in his ex-girlfriend who was really integral to his trans identity and experience because she is very interested in being a mother. So they kind of get involved in a very messy, complicated situation. It's very much contemporary, very much millennial fiction, very dramatic and messy in a realistic way. And I think that it's gotten a lot of hype for good reason. It's a good book. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was a really fun book and I listened to it on audiobook, so highly recommend that experience. It's just pretty brilliant and I understand why it's getting a lot of hype and it is a 2021 release worth your attention for sure. The next 2021 release I want to talk about, Sarah Land by Sam Cohen. This is a collection of short stories about characters named Sarah and they're all in varying places in life they are varying people this was a really smart fun short story collection i feel like it's gotten minimal to no hype it's very solid if you like short story collections if you like contemporary millennial feminist fiction queer fiction you should check it out um i liked it the next book i want to talk about is one that i talked about in my video with renaissance my podcast co-host which i'll link in the cards obviously and this video is us reacting to other people's negative reviews of our favorite books. So we talked about this book, The Divines by Ellie Eaton, extensively in that video. Go check it out if you uh, want to. And also for the people who have seen it and enjoyed and, you know, enjoyed our banter and silliness and that video and let me know in the comments. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. I, uh, I love the love, but you know, me and Renaissance won't be able to film any other videos together for a long time because we are long distance besties and you know we're usually on opposite coasts most of the year so hopefully next year when we are back in town together we can film more videos for you guys since you guys seem to like it but if you liked our banter and commentary and analysis on you know media and we want to hear our other thoughts on like pop culture and internet culture and politics from our, you know, lesbian, communist, critically analyzing media sort of lens, go listen to our podcast, The Lavender Menace, please do. Okay, anyway, back to The Divine's Belly Eaton, which is a January of 2021 release. And this book has gotten minimal hype, I think. But I am doing my goddamn best to hype it and make everyone read this book because I really enjoyed it and I think it is so intelligent and such a wonderful messy exploration of girlhood and youth and uh, queerness and female friendship and the intense drama messiness and cruelty of it. It's set in alternating timelines. One of our main character, Joe being a 30 year old woman married gonna have a kid and in all turn in the other timeline of her past as a teenager at a British boarding school with other British boarding school girls girls who are all very snobby and preppy and bitchy <laughs> so if you don't like reading about bitchy girls and their drama then don't read this book because you're not gonna like it but I feel like this book is in itself a criticism of these things and a really interesting look at class and identity and womanhood and motherhood and uh i thought it was brilliant and the author whom me and renaissance spoke to for episode four of our podcast actually of season one we interviewed or spoke to the author ellie eaton herself and she's lovely so i have to recommend this book please go read it it is a delight in my opinion and i think that the twists and turns and the drama of it all is fantastic it's it's just fantastic so the next book i want to talk about is a poetry book it is written in verse but it's a young adult sort of novel in verse kind of in the vein of like elizabeth acevedo who i think blurbs this book on the cover and that is home is on a country by sofia el Hio. this book is wonderful in its young adults um young woman coming of age magical realism uh, grappling with trauma and family and community and culture and displacement. It's done in a really masterful way, I think, and it was 
very moving. I, I enjoyed it and it's a 2021, it's a 2021 release that if you like young adult, if you like books written in verse, you should check it out. The next book I want to talk about is Girls of a Certain Age by Maria Edelman. This book is another short story collection, a lot of millennial girl boss fiction uh, stories, but kind of ranging in, you know, girls of a certain age, various ages, various experiences, various narratives. And I really liked this short story collection. It's pretty queer, it's pretty feminist, it's pretty interesting. I liked it. I liked it. I think this has not gotten that much hype and I think it deserves more. So check it out if short story collections interest you. Contemporary, realistic, you know, stories centered around women. The next book I want to talk about is a mystery thriller and that is Finley Donovan is Killing It by Ellie Cosimano. I've talked about this book extensively on this channel. Honestly, all of these books, obviously, because I explained, as I explained, a lot of these I have reading vlogs for or reviews for or wrap ups in which I discuss them, but that's because I read them this year. Anyway, Finley Donovan is Killing It is about a suspense romance author, single mom, recently divorced, um, who is struggling with money and struggling with her life because she's a mess and she gets accidentally hired to be a hitman and then she gets involved in all this messy, murderous, wacky shit. It was wild and a really fun time, gripping through and through. So funny. It was such a lighthearted read, even though it's about, you know, like romance, uh, or not romance, even though it's about killing people and murder. I thought that it was so fun and I just want more mystery thrillers like this. And it's a 2021 mystery release that I think has gotten a decent amount of buzz, decent amount of hype, but I still think more people should pick it up because it is so good and I thoroughly enjoyed it. The next book I want to talk about is Persephone Station by Stina Liked. This book is a queer space opera sci-fi novel following a bunch of characters who are human and who are not and it incorporates technology and obviously like spaceships and missions and infiltration and espionage and overthrowing oligarchies and technological empires. It's like a queer trans gay Star Wars, kind of, in some ways. Uh, I thought that it was so fascinating and fast paced and, you know, if you like sci-fi and you like queer people, <laughs> if you like queer sci-fi, you check it out. I thought it was really fun. The next book I want to talk about is Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This book has gotten a lot of hype for a good fucking reason. It is a good book. I know a lot of people don't like it or think it's meh, but I enjoyed it thoroughly and immensely. And it's about a huge pop star named Mick Riva, who is one of Evelyn Hugo's husbands, if you've read The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and he is kind of a dickwad deadbeat father, but we follow his sort of origin story through the perspective of the mother of the siblings that are the main characters and the focus of the story. The siblings are all children of McRiva and they have all struggled a lot in life and we see their struggles and then also we see their successes in the present day as these huge Hollywood stars. So I thought that it was very dramatic and messy and fun. I liked it. The next book I want to talk about is a 2021 queer, sapphic, young adult contemporary release by Kelly Quinlan, and that is She Drives Me Crazy. This book was such an absolute delight. A sapphic rom-com that doesn't really deal with the hard-hitting stuff of like coming out, um, but still squeezes in all those romance tropes that you know and love, you know, fake dating, enemies to lovers, um, forced proximity. <laughs> it's it's so fun. Um, it's about this main character who is a basketball player and then the cheerleader and they don't like each other and there's drama, but you know, they get together because that's that's the point of a romance. Uh, it made me cry. It got, it got me emotional, hit me in the feels and I thought it was lovely, lovely and definitely worth reading if you want us to have a young adult book. The next book I want to talk about is Survive the Night by Riley Sager. This book is a thriller that has gotten a lot of buzz, a lot of hype. Lots of people don't like it. Lots of people really enjoyed it. And I definitely enjoyed it and I would recommend it. But I think you need to go into it understanding that it is a story about a victim 
of a crime and someone who's suffered a lot of trauma and it's anyway so the whole premise is that there's it's there's this college campus there's this girl whose best friend was murdered and there's like someone known as the campus killer going around killing you know college aged women and she is suffering a lot and so she decides to go home and she's looking for a ride home and then the stranger is like let's i'll take you home why not and she's like you know okay whatever i need a ride home so you can take me and then on the ro- on the car ride things start looking a little fishy so this book was really interesting and a fascinating look at i think like male violence fundamentally and also the male gaze and the twist at the end it it kind of hits you it, it hits you with the double punch of that i think so you kind of need to hold up to the end in my humble opinion so the next book i want to talk about is one that i fear hasn't gotten that much hype i don't think and that is a dowry of blood by st gibson this is a queer poly vampire story <laughs> kind of reminds me of like Addie larue because it's like set throughout time because you know vampires are immortal and can live through time but also they kind of need to be invisible because they can't have people recognize them you know and call them out for being vampires and be hunted down but it's also about abuse and relationship manipulation and gaslighting and the horror of that because we're following our main character who is at the beginning of the book this very young naive girl whose whole family and village was slaughtered and then she becomes a vampire because this old vampire guy takes her in as his like muse or whatever and things go on from there but i thought this is a really solid like sci-fi fantasy novella and i really enjoyed it and i think that it is a solid 2021 release the next book i want to talk about is one that i've heard no hype at all i feel like i'm the only person that i've heard talk about this book so far and that is the graphic novel stone fruit by lee lai i mentioned this book in my taylor swift music to book rex video i think that it is a wonderful look at childhood and queerness uh, but not queer childhood like queer adults and then there's a child involved and then there's like family drama and complex relationships and mental illness and depression it was very very heartwarming and sad and melancholy but beautiful really enjoyed this queer little graphic novel the next book i want to talk about is the box in the woods by maureen johnson this is the latest release in the box in the woods series by maureen johnson which is a young adult mystery series and i think that it's mid like the series as a whole but this book i think was so fun and gripping especially towards the end i was on the edge of my seat and i was i wanted to know what happened next and i thought that the way that the story unraveled and the summer camp mystery element and the thriller mystery parts of it really fun and you know our main character is stevie who is obsessed with mysteries true crime and solving mysteries and so she gets invited to the summer camp to like try to solve this cold case of a murder of a bunch of counselors summer camp counselors in the woods in the 70s and she's there with all her friends and stuff starts going awry but also she's trying to solve this cold case so i thought that this was very clever and well done so i i enjoyed it i think it deserves the hype that it's getting and it's a solid 2021 YA mystery release. The next book I want to talk about is another recently released mystery, and that is Dial A for Aunties. Well, this is more of like a thriller, and this is another fun thriller, like Finley Donovan is Killing It. This book is funny, funny through and through, and Dial A for Aunties is about this like 26-year-old Indo-Chinese woman who works for her like family as her mom and her aunt's family business of like weddings so wedding entertainment and flowers and photography and makeup and our main character is the photographer and she gets set up on this like blind date with this guy that her mom catfished on a dating site for her on her behalf it's wild and she accidentally murders him on their date because he's being creepy <laughs> for the day following that we're following our main character and her whole family try to cover their tracks and resolve this shit but along the way there's also a romance going on 
because the ex-boyfriend from college that our main character left behind once she graduated reappears in her life and she's questioning the decisions that she made as a young adult in person and whether she should have you know left the nest by now i thought it was really cute and lovely so solid solid 2021 release i think the next book I want to talk about is Beautiful World, Where Are You? by Sally Rooney. I've talked about this book extensively at this point and like on every platform everywhere because I adore it so much. It's Sally Rooney's best work for sure and it combines all of the elements of her previous books that work so well and elevates it to a new level while adding other angles of like description and analysis in a really wonderful way I think and it's just so incredible. There's nothing else to say. I feel like I've talked about it so much and on loop at this point. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's phenomenal. The next book I want to talk about is one that I feel like has gotten no hype and minimal chatter about it, but that's because it's like a scribbed original and that is The Only Living Girl on Earth by Charles Yu. This is a wonderful little sci-fi novella, very short and very mind-blowing. And kind of reminds me of The Hike by Drew Maggery, which is one of my favorite books ever and of last year. So I really enjoyed it for that. I thought it was really mind bendy and it makes me want to, it's a book that after I finished listening to it, I listened to it again and I kind of want to listen to it again now. I felt the same way about The Hike too, because it, it's just like a wild ride through and through and the story kind of like folds in, a, it's kind of like a Russian doll of a story almost. It's beautiful. And the last book I want to talk about that is a 2021 release that I have heard no buzz about, no hype about, is Agatha of Little Neon by Claire Luchette. This book is sapphic and it's about a nun and her, her sisters in the convent and their lives and her relationships to the communities that she's supposed to serve and her relationship to her faith and God and herself and the other women that she knows and her role over the course of the years um and it was just so lovely and it grappled with a lot of the themes of the tragedies within the catholic church and it it was so it was so good and so touching and heartwarming and i loved it it was so lovely so yeah um that's all the books i want to talk about with you today uh, those are all the 2021 book releases that i have read and enjoyed and would recommend if you think I've missed any 2021 releases, comment them down below. Please let me know if there are any other 2021 releases I should keep an eye out for, that I should read, that I should review, you know, whatever. And um, yeah, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe if you want to. My camera died in the middle of saying my goodbye, but Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>